La dieta empieza mañana. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Fulio of Echele Porros Productions and today we're going to be making two versions of animal style fries. The potatoes we're going to be using are some regular russet potatoes and I'm going to be cutting these up into fries. We're going to be baking them off in a 400 degree oven because I don't have a fryer yet and trying to fry stuff indoors is horrible. <laughs> and for the improved version, we're going to be using some curly fries. Let's start off by cutting our potatoes into little fry planks. You're gonna cut one side and you're just gonna keep trying to cut in equal thickness, equal portions, so that way everything cooks evenly. All right, once you got those cut up to whatever thickness, whatever size you want them. You're gonna take those and put them in a bowl of water for about 15 minutes to let the starch wash off. While the potatoes are resting, we're gonna be taking some onions and dicing them up. Once those are all nice and diced up, we're gonna get them cooking down on the stove top. All right, once you got a pan up to temp, around medium lowish, you're gonna wanna put all your onion in. You're gonna let that cook down for around 10, 15 minutes. You don't want it to get scorched. You just want it nice and caramelized. In addition to the onion, we're also gonna be dicing up some bacon and getting that rendered down as well. So remember for your bacon, you want to start it off in a cold pan and then you wanna turn on the heat to about medium and you want that to heat up with the pan. All right, so our potatoes have been washed for about 15 minutes in the water we took them out and you want to get them really dry. You want to take any of that water off. If you got a salad spinner, use that. If you got some towels that you want to pat it dry down with, do that. But make sure they're really dry. Arrange them however you want. I have a lot of the smaller guys on the lower rack. I hit them with some oil spray and then I hit them with some garlic salt. We'll arrange them like that. These ones elevated on the rack and the bottom ones with some parchment paper. These are ready to go in the oven. But first, we'll also get our curly fries ready. Again, you're gonna take another pan with another rack, hit it with some oil spray, and just get your curly fries on there. <laughs> Say goodbye to your New Year's resolution now. Just like the other fries, we're gonna have some fries on the bottom and some elevated on top with the rack. Our oven is preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna put these in probably about 20, 25 minutes, check them at that point. The curly fries should probably be done at that point. We'll see how our homemade ones go. Let's get them in the oven. So on that topic, last week I posted my Sonoran hot dog videos, but there was this one guy that his comment just really caught my attention, so I'm gonna read it out. You know, just because we're on the topics of ovens. Because if you didn't know, I put my Sonoran hot dogs in the oven to cook. So the bacon and the, the salchicha cook evenly. They cook well because I don't have a grill yet. Here's the comment. Nobody uses a f***ing oven. Don't get me started on that salchicha type and everything else. This video is bullshit. Everybody uses a f***ing oven. Right? So, I mean, this made me laugh, and it was just like, really? Anyways, on to the next thing. So for the sauce, I'm gonna be making it a little bit different than what traditionally may be used, but hopefully it's an improvement. So we're gonna start. Teenage boy when you figures out what he can do in puberty. OMG, ew. So to start off, we're gonna get about a cup of mayo. And to that, we're actually gonna be adding about a fourth cup of our chipotle mixture that we made the chipotle mayo with back in our Sonoran hot dogs video. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. And then you're gonna mix this. After you have that nice and mixed into a chipotle mayo, we're going to add a bit of mustard, a bit of ketchup, a little bit of barbecue sauce. Once you have that mixed up, the last thing we're gonna be putting in is a bit of diced up pickle and a little bit of the pickle juice into the mix. 
and get that pickle and you'll mix give it a taste that's great all right so we're gonna make a plate each I put some sharp cheddar on top of both of them and we're gonna throw them in the broiler for a bit make sure you don't leave things in the broiler for too long because they will get burned quite easily but we're gonna throw these under the broiler to get the cheese melted here it is in all its melty goodness so now let's continue assembly of the fries we're gonna top this with our animal style sauce then we'll hit it with some grilled onions and last but not least some bacon check those out let's try these out eating <laughs> don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below <laughs> wow. hit the notifications button comment and let us know what you would like to see next <laughs> what she said these are just awesome go out make it buy it just 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 eat this eat what makes you happy hit the subscribe button subscribe to to everything hit that like button hit the notification bell and just just cut oh you know that's crispy hey everybody this is Fulio of Echele Porros Productions and today we're gonna be making two types of pizza today we're actually gonna be making our own dough so to start off we need to get one cup of warm water that's between 100 and 110 degrees. You're gonna get a pack of active yeast. Pour that in there. You're also gonna get a teaspoon of sugar. Mix that up. And we're gonna let that proof for about 10, 15 minutes. In our handy dandy processor we got for the wedding, we're gonna add three cups of flour. To that you're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Next you're gonna add our yeast that was blooming for a bit and the water. To that you're gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil and just let that mix together. Just until it forms a ball you're gonna take it out, form it into a nice little dough ball Plop that into your container, you're going to cover it with aluminum foil and let it sit in a warm place for about one hour. Let's check on our dough and it's doubled nicely. What you're going to do is you're going to take your fingers and give it a nice kwacha, kwacha. That's a culinary term, I promise. So you're going to get your dough on a floured surface. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this in half, so about right there. If you're running low on flour, just always have some at hand. Obviously, I've never worked in a pizza place, so don't judge my pizza making skills. If you have a bottle of wine, use that. Who needs to drink wine when you can just use it as a rolling pin? Alright, once you got it to a decent size, we can start with our toppings. Our first pizza will be our classic pepperoni and sausage. So I use this sauce and I add some extra oregano, garlic, and chili flakes to it to make it a lot better. But you want to make your own, you want to buy it, you want to use it straight from the store, no problem. I mean, we made our own crust. I think we get a pass for that. We're going to get our sauce. After your sauce, you're going to put some cheese. We're using some mozzarella here. Again, as little or as much as you want. We like it cheesy up in here. After your cheese, finally your meats. Here we have some pepperoni. 
and some Cajun sausage. So we're gonna alternate pepperoni, sausage, pepperoni, sausage. And because we have it and we shot these episodes back to back, we'll use some grilled onions and bacon. So now that that's ready, we're gonna get it into the oven. The oven is set at 500. It's gonna cook nice and hot and quick and it's gonna get all crispy and woo! All right, for this next pizza, we're gonna be putting some spinach on it. So an easy way to get spinach nice and chopped up is to get the leaves, get them together. And now you're going to roll the leaves like your favorite recreational device, whatever you do. And then you're just gonna chop it. And you get nice little ribbons. All right, let's move on to our second pizza. Dough. Roll it around a bit. Let's go with that. All right, so for this one, we'll be using pesto as the base for the pizza. And on top of the pesto, we'll actually be putting our spinach because we don't want that on the top because we don't want it burning too much. We'll put that under the cheese. So it's nice and cooked, just not scorched. On top of that, we'll put the cheese, some tomatoes, and some sausage. Now let's get this in the oven. Look at these beauties. Wow. I was a little worried of how these would turn out because this is my first time making the dough from scratch. But I mean, just look at that. Oh, you know, that's crispy. Let's cut into this. Use my left hand. So you can get a good shot. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Yet. And as the chef, I'm obligated to try my food before anyone else does just because I need to make sure it's good. So let's go with the pepperoni first. I make some good <laughs> shit. All right, now let's try the pesto one. Okay, stop eating it. <laughs> oh wow. <clears throat> Those both though that 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 dough and that crust. That's where it's at. Even if it doesn't come out a nice circle, even if it's a little ee, but cook it. I mean that that that's great. Like honestly. Let's just do the outro because I want to get back to eating this pizza. If you like what we did here, like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you're always notified of when our next video comes out. And just go out and cook. Because this is better than what you'll get in the store. So, have a good one. And remember, nobody uses fucking ovens. Take uno. I don't know how to do this anymore. It's been so long. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echale Porros Productions and today we're going to be teaching you how to make a simple yet elegant dish for Valentine's Day. We are making a creamy Tuscan chicken pasta and an avocado mozzarella tomato salad. Let's get to it. Let's go over what we need for the dish. Here we have two breasts that have been marinating in some Olive Garden Italian dressing, a sausage for some extra oomph, fettuccine pasta, some spinach, sun-dried tomatoes, a head of garlic, heavy cream, and for our avocado tomato mozzarella salad, we have some avocados, some cherry tomatoes, and a block of mozzarella. Let's get started. We already have some water boiling for our pasta, so let's get that in there. Let's get started with our little side salad. Here you have some fresh mozzarella. For today, we'll be using just around half. 
So as you can see, they're already cut into pieces. So all we need to do is peel them up a bit and they'll be good to go. Simple pieces, not too big, not too small. We can move on. Let's move on to the cherry tomatoes. For these, we're just gonna cut them in fourths. So we're gonna go half, take your two halves, and cut that down the middle. We get nice pieces that aren't too big, not too small, just like the mozzarella. And lastly, we'll get to our avocados. As usual, knife down the middle, go around, split them in half, cut them in the skin, straight into the bowl. Let's do it. After you have everything in your bowl together, you're gonna get your dressing, and you're gonna pour as much or as little as you want. You want it more, you want it more dressing than you eat? Is that a word? I don't think so. You, <laughs> you want it dressed up? Go all in. You want nothing at all? That's totally fine on Valentine's Day. You get your spoon. I'm just gonna mix it. Be rough, be gentle, be however you want. And there you go. Put that in the fridge, cover it up and just wait for the rest of the food to be done. So we have our side salad done, our pasta's done cooking. So let's get to the chicken. Here we have the chicken out of the marinade and our sausage all chopped up. We have a pan with some oil heating up over medium heat. Let's get this done. You have your oil heating up. You want it a bit smoking because you want the chicken to get some color when you put it in. We're gonna put the chicken in for about four minutes each side, let's get it done. And let's get our sausage in. All right, it's been about four minutes. Let's get them flipped. And that's what you want to see. If there's no color in your chicken, there's no flavor. Woo! All right, once those have been cooking for a bit, we can take it off the heat and we'll put the chicken to the side to rest. All right, once your chicken and sausage is done, what you're left with is the fawn, which is all these little burnt, quote unquote, pieces. But there's a bunch of flavor in here, so we're gonna deglaze the pan and we're gonna make our sauce. To start our deglazing process, we're gonna use a bit of wine. And just whisk that and get all those nice little pieces off. You're gonna let the wine reduce just a bit to burn off any excess alcohol that's in there. Once your wine's reduced down a bit, you're gonna come in with your heavy cream. Like that. Give it a nice whisk. Get everything incorporated. Throw in your garlic. And you're gonna start letting that reduce down. All right, once that's cooked down for a bit, we're gonna add some sun-dried tomatoes with its oil. You can season your cream however you want. We put some garlic salt, some chili flakes, some habanero pepper in there. Next, we're gonna add a buttload of spinach. It looks like a lot, but once it cooks down, it's gonna be basically nothing. So you're gonna put that in. Let that wilt down. Let the sauce cook down a bit more and then we'll be ready to add back our chicken. Then we're also gonna add some nice Parmesan cheese into the mix. And this, you want it to be nice and cheesy. Mix that in, let that melt down. In about a minute, we'll be ready to add back our chicken and sausage. So what you want is to be able to coat the back of a spoon, run your finger through it, that's how thick you want it. Once it's that way, we're ready to add back our chicken. 
There we go. Here we go. Add back your chicken, add back your sausage, and add back any extra juices that came out of the chicken while it was resting. Put that on the lowest heat. And you're gonna let that ride for about five, six minutes. And once that's done, we're gonna be ready to plate. All right, let's get this chicken on this plate. some of this spinach, tomato, sausage, get some of that sauce going. And there you have it, Valentine's Day dinner. Let's try this. Let's try this out. Look at all this chicken. Again, I make some good stuff. The funk it gets from the tomatoes, the spinach, just the ugh, everything. Let's try the salad. This I've made before. This is good. Make this, make this, make them separate, make them together. Doesn't really matter. Let's wash it all down. I hope you give this a go. I hope you like how it turns out. If you do try it out, make sure to send us a picture at our Instagram, Echele Porras. As always, I've been Fulio. If you want to subscribe, the subscribe button will be up here. Latest video over here. And go out, have a happy Valentine's Day, be safe, and have a great one. That is some good dip. Hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echele Porros Productions, and today we're going to be making one of my favorite side dishes, spinach artichoke dip. Let's go over what we need to make the dish. For your base, you're gonna need some mayo, some sour cream, a bit of heavy cream, and a star, some cream cheese. For your fillings, you're gonna need a buttload of spinach, some artichokes, a couple cloves of garlic, and a variety of spices. We have here some paprika, crushed red pepper, garlic salt, and some pepper. Let's get started with the dish. All right, let's start off making the base for our dip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our two blocks of cream cheese in our bowl. You're gonna take a fork and you're just gonna squish that down a bit. If you can let this get to room temp before you start, it's gonna help a lot better. Once you have that mixed around a bit, you're gonna add your mayo and your sour cream. We used about a half cup of each, so total one cup of mayo mixed with sour cream. If you want to add more, go ahead. If you want to add less, go ahead. More sour cream than mayo, sure. More mayo than sour cream, it doesn't really matter as long as you have some other form of fat in there. That's all this dish really is. Some cheese mixed with fat. And we're gonna mix this again. It should be a little bit easier. You can move on to your whisk. That sound though. It doesn't look that good right now, but just you wait. After a bit, you're gonna add your heavy cream, probably about a fourth to a half cup. Really, this is just getting the consistency you want. There's no hard measurement for this part. You want chunky, you do less. You want smooth, you do more. Once you got it where you want it, you can move on to the filling. Let's start with our buttload of spinach. So an easy way to chop spinach quickly is you're gonna get your leaves and you're just gonna stack them. 
Usually you want the biggest leaf on the bottom. So you're going to take a stack and you're going to roll them like your favorite recreational activity. And then you can use the stems too. And when you're here, just slice through them and you get nice little, nice little ribbons. And of course these are gonna cook down when you put this thing in the oven. And once you got as much spinach as you want, you can put it in your bowl. Get it in your bowl and just fold it in. Let's go to our artichokes. You can get them whole, you can get them canned. I don't really know how to process artichokes when they're fresh, so I just get the canned ones. You're just gonna take them, give them a nice rough chop. All right, once you got the artichokes to the consistency you want them, put them in your mix. And fold those in as well. Next, you're gonna put some garlic. We're gonna start with about three cloves and we'll see how it is from there. And once you got those in, again, you're just gonna fold them in. Let's get started with our spices. First, we're gonna do some paprika. And I can't really tell you that we have actually measured this out. I would start with about a teaspoon each and from there adjust it to your taste. This is very subjective. This is up to you. If you don't want to use crushed red pepper, you don't have to. If you don't want to use paprika, if you don't want to use extra salt, which we do recommend salt. But really this is just a tutorial to get you to your dish. Start out with some paprika. enough to cover the top, some crushed red chili flakes, some black pepper, and some garlic salt. 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 Now fold that all in. Once you have all your spices mixed in, up to your taste, we're gonna add some mozzarella cheese. After your mozzarella, we're gonna go in and we're gonna hit it with some parm. After you've mixed it, we're ready to put it in our containers and we're ready to put it in the oven. Let's get it containered. <laughs> Contained. That container sounds cool. So, we don't have any little fancy special containers to put these in yet, so we're just gonna put them in our glass containers and two mugs that we have because we can and it's portable. Portable. Individual size. Individual size. Whatever my wife is saying, she knows what she's talking about. She's the one that usually makes this. Mm -hmm. All right. Once those are in their containers, we're gonna top them off a bit more cheese. And those are ready to go in the oven. We're gonna leave them for about 20, 25 minutes. Let's get them in. And 
and there we have it. Spinach artichoke dip. Perfect for any occasion. Party, superb owl party, football, sports, just to make on any random day because you want it and you record it and put it on YouTube. Doesn't really matter. Let's try it out. First we'll go chip. Something I haven't done before, I toasted up some little pieces of bread. I really want to see how it tastes on this. As always, I make some good sh Woo! You want to try it? Sure. This is my beautiful wife. She's the one usually behind the camera, so she's gonna try it out. Mm. Yeah, good. So you can leave that as a dip, or you can use it for a variety of other dishes. Last week with the Tuscan chicken, it was actually supposed to be stuffed with this dip but the chicken breasts we got were a little too flat. You can also make a Tuscan omelet, which is an omelet stuffed with your spinach artichoke dip. Here we have it with the steak on top. And I'm gonna try it out with a spoon. So there we have it. Make this, go out, impress your friends, impress your family. If you want to subscribe, up. If you want to subscribe, the subscribe button will be up here. Latest video over here. Go out, have a great day, and be happy. Cut. Boom. You looking for this? Hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echele Porros Productions, and today we're gonna be showing you how to make some chicken parmesan. Let's start off by going over the ingredients we need. So chicken parmesan isn't too complicated to make. It's just your chicken, some pasta, breading, and then your tomato sauce and cheese. Super simple, we can make it quick. Obviously, you need some chicken. We have some chicken breasts today, a couple eggs, another one of our mozzarella logs, some breadcrumbs, pasta to serve it over, or if you don't wanna do pasta, do whatever you want some tomato sauce. Remember I use the pizza sauce as a base and then I add garlic, red pepper flake, and some oregano to really intensify those flavors. Today for our pasta we'll be using some pesto sauce to add a different flavor profile. You're already gonna have some of the marinara with the chicken parmesan so let's change it up with some pesto for the pasta. And of course you'll need some flour when you go to bread your chicken. Let's get our pasta in the water. Let's get started with processing our chicken. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten these out a bit so they are a lot more even. We're gonna take another piece of parchment paper, put it over this and smash it down with our good old tequila bottle. So let's get to that. We'll get these to about half inch, three fourths of an inch thick. We're gonna fry them in the pan for a bit and then we're gonna finish them off in the oven. Let's get them breaded. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some of our flour and we're gonna dust the chicken with it. So the flour isn't the primary breading in this case, that's the breadcrumbs, but you still want some flour for the egg wash to stick to. Use one hand for the chicken, use one hand for the flour so you don't get any cross contamination. All you want is a nice light coat. But once you got those coated, we can start with the breading process, but first let's season our breadcrumbs a bit. Again, for your own purposes, you can probably start with about a teaspoon each. We're gonna season with some paprika, some oregano, some basil, some parsley, some red chili flakes, a bit of black pepper, and finally some garlic salt. Give that a little mix, and you'll be good to go. 
Since we didn't marinate this chicken or season it beforehand, a lot of the flavor is coming straight from the breadcrumbs. Get it in your egg wash. Nice and coated, nice and in there. Let it drip for a bit. Now let's transfer over to the breadcrumbs. Sprinkle your breadcrumbs over, press it in there. Shake off any excess that didn't stick. And you can put it on a rack and we'll, while we get the other one prepared. Into your rack. Once you got those nice and coated, we can move over to our stove top and we can get these bad boys fried. As you can see, we have our saucepan heating up with a good amount of oil. We're not deep frying it. We're going to be shallow frying it, so we'll be flipping it about two, three minutes per side. So this is enough oil. Put a bit of butter in our mix. And once your butter is almost completely melted through, let's put our first piece of chicken. Lay it away from you because you don't want any of that oil splashing on you. Here we're just looking for color. We're not looking to cook the chicken through yet because we're gonna finish it off in the oven. We're gonna let it go for about two, three minutes per side. All right, once you got it nice and colored, you can put them off to the side and we can start getting our pan ready for the oven. All right, once you've cleaned up your pan a bit, let's get it ready for the oven. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take some of our tomato sauce and we're gonna put a bit along the bottom. Not too much, just enough to coat and so that the bottom of your chicken is not sauceless. Then you're gonna come in with your chicken. One and two. Now you're gonna hit the top of your chicken with some of your tomato sauce. Now here you can make it as saucy as you want or if you want to use less sauce, go ahead. Then you'll come in with your fresh mozzarella. For just a bit more flavor, we'll top this with some pesto. Not a lot, because we'll have some in our pasta. Some extra herb. Here we're putting some more basil and some more oregano. And these are ready to go into 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. You want the internal temperature of the chicken to come up to 160. You can take it out, let it rest, and then it will climb to 165, which is the recommended temperature to heat your chicken to. Boom! You're looking for this. The chicken. Ooh. I'm so ready for this. Let's go with just our chicken first. Oh, I needed that. Let's go with a bit of pasta. If you haven't had pesto pasta, give it a try. Now let's go chicken and pasta. Just cause we can. Woo! Chicken Parmesan is definitely a guilty pleasure. Hopefully you go out and you try to make this yourself. Remember, if you do make it and you want us to check it out, tag us on our Instagram, at Echale Porras. As always, I've been Fulio. Subscribe is up there. Latest video up there. Our other channels down there. Go out, have a great day, and eat well. Peace. Boom. You looking for this? Hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echele Porras Productions and today we're going to be showing you guys how to make a T-bone steak and egg breakfast. Ooh. So for our breakfast today, we're going to keep it pretty simple. 
Here we have some potatoes and onions, three eggs, and our main course, a T-bone steak. And let's get it ready for the grill. Look at that beauty. So for those who don't know, a T-bone steak consists of a New York strip steak combined with, on, in our case, a pretty small filet and then the bone that connects them. If you separate them, you get two different steaks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this seasoned up and ready for the grill. What you wanna do first is you wanna get a binder on your steak, whether that be oil, uh, some people use mustard, a combination of oil, soy sauce, whatever. Whatever you need to get a thin layer so your seasoning sticks. What we're gonna be using today is a chipotle based pepper sauce. So let's get this ready. You know, get that on your steak, get a nice even layer. Once you got your thin layer, we're gonna go hit it with some salt and some pepper and some of our porra seasoning that we found coming back from our honeymoon. Pat that in a bit and don't be worried about over seasoning the steak too much because in reality, you're gonna be eating strips of it where you only be getting little tiny pieces of seasoned meat per bite. So can you really over season one bite? Yes, but you can be kind of liberal with this. And then we can do the other side. Today, something different. We are gonna be taking this outside. All right, we brought this outside because we are gonna show off our new toy our beautiful grill that my wife got me for Christmas that I barely set up not too long ago. Here we have the Cuisinart 360 griddle. Sexy. All right, our steak is ready. Let's hear this sizzle. Oh, that sounds beautiful. We're gonna take the potatoes and onions and get them on this side and let those cook down. We're gonna let the steak cook for about two, three minutes. We'll flip it two, three minutes and we'll take its temperature and if we need to go longer, we'll keep going. And some oil. Some oil on this side too. All right, it's been about two, three minutes. We're gonna flip our steak. Ooh, look at that. OMG. ADM, I will see So, on this side, we're gonna let it go for another two, three minutes. We're shooting for an internal temp of 120. We'll pull it off, let it rest. But while we have it here, we're gonna be basing it with some butter, some garlic butter. I'm just gonna go across the steak. And this is just gonna give it an enhanced flavor, a nice butter flavor, and it's just gonna be gorgeous. And we'll give some to the potatoes too. All right, it's been about another two, three minutes. Let's flip it again. That, that was a fail. Probably another minute or two and we should be fine with the steak. While that's going, let's get our huevitos on. If you wanna go ahead and scrape the little brown bits off, you can, but we're gonna keep them on because that's extra flavor. So egg number one, number two, and number three. This is gonna be gorgeous. Let's get our steak off. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Let that rest and our eggs. Already. Quick flip. Flip. Quick flip. 
Let's turn the gas off and those are ready to take back inside. Look at this. This is beautiful. For the guy who said nobody uses a fucking oven, I can see what you mean now. This is gorgeous. You ready for this? Look at that steak. Let's go with it. That is steak. And to be honest, not even that expensive. We got that piece from Target. And I was like, what? Target has steaks? If you can splurge for that really good stuff, go for it. But if you want a good steak that's at a decent price, hey, if you can find it, why not get it? Let's get the rest of this stuff together. What you're gonna see, whoo, is sexy. Oh yeah. Look at that yolk. All right, let's get a bite of everything together. Some huevito, some steak. <laughs> Potatoes. <laughs> Those are gorgeous. Hoy me pasé. Hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echele Porros Productions and today we're going to be showing you guys how to prepare two different types of chicken wings. Alright, first of all, big shout out to Fern El Hayer if you've been on the Fulio channel. He generously donated big ass bag of chicken wings to us and he's the reason we're doing this recipe today so thank you big shout out to you you're awesome love all you guys another big shout out to the first channel donator my tia Loli we're just totally grateful to you thank you let's get on with the recipe all right so for today we are using whole wings and we're gonna show you how to break them down to get the drum and the flat the tips don't really have much meat. We can use that for like the caldo, but we'll probably just be getting rid of these for our purposes. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna get the tip away from the rest of it. You can do that. Really, you're just gonna be getting these and popping the joints and then cutting in between those joints. After you popped it, just go through the skin. So now to get the flat and the drum separated, you're going to want to cut through this excess skin. You're going to want to pop the joint and just cut in between there. And there you have it, your flat and your drum. Let's do another one. Again, pop the joint, cut through, cut through your excess skin, pop the joint, and there you go. All right, once you got all your drums and your flat separated, we're gonna put them on a wire rack and we'll season them up. We'll give them a quick pat down just to make sure they're nice and dry. We'll put a little bit of oil on them, but you want the skins nice and dry before you put your seasonings on them. That way when they get into the oven, they crisp up nicely. You want your drums and your flat separated because they do vary a bit in cooking time. These are gonna be tossed with our original buffalo sauce, and these are gonna be glazed with a chipotle barbecue sauce. Let's get them seasoned. For our chipotle barbecue, we're gonna be seasoning with our Memphis style barbecue rub. For our original buffalo sauce wings, we're gonna be using some garlic salt. Yo, flip. Get those on the back side. Mm -hmm. 
And once you got these seasoned up, they are ready for the oven. We have our oven preheated to 400 degrees and we are gonna let these cook for about 40 to 50 minutes or until their skin is nice and crispy. Let's get them in the oven. While the wings are cooking in the oven, we're gonna get started on our buffalo sauce. You're gonna get about a cup of whatever your favorite hot sauce is. Here we're using Frank's Red Hot, so get that in your pot. Get a stick or a half stick or however much of butter you have, plop that in. We like extra spicy here, so we're gonna put about a teaspoon of chili flake to help enhance that red color. We're also gonna do about a teaspoon of paprika and to round it off, some pepper. A tu gusto. I'm gonna whisk that together a bit until the butter melts down. Keep going, let it cook down, let all the flavors melt together. Once the butter's melted and once it's cooked down and the flavors have mixed, you can turn off the heat. You can put that aside to cool. Spring to a simmer and let that cool down while your wings are in the oven. See there, and cut. <laughs> So we have our hot, our butt, blah, blah, blah. so we have our, our butt, <laughs> so we have our buffalo sauce already made and now we're going to be mixing together our ingredients for our chipotle barbecue sauce. You're going to get your favorite barbecue, about a cup, and then we're going to get a half cup of the base we use for our chipotle mayo back in the Sonoran hot dogs video. If you haven't seen that one, you can check it out by clicking the link in the upper right hand corner. So you're gonna put that in. Again, you're gonna whisk them together a bit. Put some pepper. Whisk that together. Let it come up to a slow simmer and your chipotle barbecue sauce is done. Look at these beauties. Ooh, I'm so ready. Now let's get these tossed in their sauces and then we'll put them back in the oven for a couple minutes just so those tack in. All right, first up, our drums will be our chipotle barbecue wings. So get your sauce, pour as much or as little as you want in there and toss it. Get those suckers nice and covered. A little more just because we can. Next we have our flats which are going to be our original buffalo. So let's get that sauce in. Alright. Woo! Oh that really clears up the sinuses. These are gorgeous. We're going to get them in the oven for a little bit longer just so the sauce tacks up on them. Ooh, that smells incredible. Ah! I'm ready, let's try these. First we're gonna go with our chipotle barbecue wing. I'm not gonna finish the whole thing because I know my wife wants to eat, so I'll hurry it up. Next, let's go with our buffalo wing. <clears throat> let's have it with a little bit of avocado lime ranch, which is just an avocado, lime zest, lime juice, and about a cup of ranch. You just blend that together and you got gorgeous green ranch. Let's try that. Oh, those are awesome. <clears throat> If you can get some wings, do it. Oh, it's awesome. Okay, hope everyone stays safe in these uncertain times. Be safe, stay safe. Uh, wash your hands, you dirties. And if you like this recipe, you know, give us a shout out down in the comments. Uh, go check out last week's episode with um, my cousin Manny. Made an awesome shrimp cocktail. Go check that out, give it some love. It's only a minute long, so even you guys with short attention spans should be able to watch it all. Once again, big shout out to Fern, LJR, for getting us these wings. 
and another big shout out to my tia Loli for you know donating to the channel for always always believing in what I do ever since I was a little cerote running around thank you and have a good one be safe cool. hey everybody this is Fulio of Echele Porros Productions and today we're gonna be showing you guys how to make some barbecue bacon smash burgers let's start off by going over what we're gonna be using for this dish first and foremost we are gonna be using some beautiful 80 20 ground beef some nice thick cut bacon because over here we like it thick half of a yellow onion that we're gonna take we're gonna cut it into strips and we're gonna be making some crunchy fried onion straws with this eight pieces of American cheese one per patty you want American because it melts easily and with smash burgers they cook so quick that you have another cheese like cheddar or something it's not gonna melt it's not gonna completely melt because the burgers are gonna be done before the cheese melts so you want some fake cheese that's gonna melt nice and beautifully for our onion straws we're gonna toss the onion in some buttermilk toss it in some flour and we're gonna fry it off and last but not least your hamburger buns you can go fancy you can go cheap it doesn't really matter hamburger buns are hamburger buns and as a side dish we're gonna have some curly fries so the oven's actually ready for these so I'm gonna put them on the pan uh, probably about half a bag they're gonna take about 20 minutes by that time we should hopefully have everything done so let's get them in the oven here we have our pound and a half of ground beef we're gonna divvy it up into eight sections make eight little balls and then we're gonna go out and take it to the griddle and make magic. But for now, a pound and a half is 24 ounces. So we're gonna do three ounce patties, which is an ounce bigger than, you know, a patty you would get at McDonald's, in and out Those are about two ounces and then they're smashed down. We're gonna go slightly bigger at three ounces. So let's get this divvied up. So you're gonna wanna make them about the size of a meatball. If you wanted to go meatballs here, you could just take this, throw it in the oven, and you got a beautiful ass meatball. But we're gonna take it to the griddle, we're gonna take some of the wax paper with us, cause then we're gonna smash it down. And it's gonna just come out so beautiful. Now I need to roll that one back up. Last piece before we take this party outside, we're gonna get your onion and just Cut some strips, not super thick. They're gonna be covered and you're gonna wanna fry these quickly. And the thinner you cut them, the less time it should take. Once you got your onions cut up, you'll put them in a bowl. Get your buttermilk, you're gonna pour that in. Just enough to cover it, just enough to get every piece of onion coated. We're gonna then dredge it in the flour. Once you got your onions covered in enough buttermilk, you're gonna take your flour, Season that up a bit. This is the same seasoning we're gonna use for our burgers, just some seasoned salt. You're gonna shake off the excess buttermilk and you're gonna take your onions, just toss it in the flour. Till they're nice and covered, they don't have to be perfect. I mean, they're gonna be fried and they're gonna be crispy and they're gonna be awesome and they're gonna go on your burger and you're just gonna love it. Once you got everything ready, we're gonna take this party outside. All right. <clears throat> We're outside, back outside with the Cuisinart 360 griddle. As you can see, got my bacon already going. It's almost done. We'll take it off in about a couple seconds here. I also have a pan heating up with some oil where I'm gonna be frying our onions. After that's done, we're gonna go with the burgers. I'm gonna put all eight of them, smash them down. They're gonna cook for about two, three minutes and then we'll be done and we can go inside and assemble our burgers. Our oil is nice and hot. Let's get our onions in and let them start frying. Good amount, you don't want to overcrowd it, but you still want a nice amount in there. Toss them around and let those ride for a couple minutes. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time for the burgers. What you're going to do first is you're going to get all your patties and just line them around. We're gonna take our smasher and smash. Okay. 
and we flip. And you get that gorgeous flip. Once we flip these, we're gonna hit them with the cheese. <clears throat> All right, let's get to assembly. You're gonna wanna toast your buns, because toasted buns are best buns. We're gonna start off with a layer of chipotle mayonnaise. Then we're gonna put a layer of pickles, just for that extra oomph. Our first patty, some bacon. Our second patty, some of our fried onion straws. And to top it off, some barbecue sauce. You can't have a barbecue bacon cheeseburger without barbecue sauce. And now, our top bun. Let's cut this in half and let's give it a try. them layers. Look at this. <clears throat> I will be honest, this is probably like one of my favorite things I've made so far. This is good. This is... Woo! I don't even know what to say next. Like, if you like this, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications of every time we upload. I know it's been a while since we've uploaded, but the world's in a crazy place right now and everyone's busy, everyone's getting affected differently. Hopefully you're staying safe, hopefully you're staying sane, and if you want to go binge watch every, every video on this channel, go ahead, it won't take you that long. We promise we'll be back with more. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the gym after eating this, whatever you need to do, uh, go check out the gaming channel. Hopefully we're going to start that back up soon too. It's just, like I said, a crazy world right now. But get out of here, I'm going to go eat. Boom. You looking for this? Hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echale Porras Productions, and today we're doing Surf and Turf. We are going to cook up some ribeye steak and lobster tails. Let's get right into it. First off, we have our gorgeous one inch thick ribeye steak. Look at that gorgeousness. Look at that fat, that marbling and all that is just gonna melt and just create so much flavor for this steak. And this is actually straight from Target. We knew you could find beautiful steaks at Target. I think I said that in the in the T-bone steak video, but it rings true here. Really gorgeous piece of meat. And our other stars of the show, two seven ounce lobster tails. Look at that. Gorgeous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make these lobster tails look fancy like you would get at Red Lobster where the meat is on top of the tail. We'll show you how to do that in a second. And then we're gonna get the steak seasoned up. We're gonna take it all out to the griddle and we're gonna have just an awesome time. We're also gonna have a side order of some pesto pasta with some homemade pesto that we made from some basil that we grew in our new toy. Well, not new toy, we've had it for a while. We just barely set it up. But we got some awesome basil out of it. We'll show you a quick little sneak peek of it. While the steak and lobster is on the grill, we're gonna be basing it with some pesto infused butter that we got right here. Let's jump straight into it. First, we're gonna season our steak and then we'll put it aside and let it rest for a while. Like we did with the ribeye a while back, 
where we did T-bone steak and eggs. Link will be up in the little corner where the little eye is and it's gonna be like, T-bone steak and eggs, check this out. Anyways, like we did with the T-bone steak, we're gonna put a binder on the outside of our steak. Last time we used the chipotle hot sauce. This time we're gonna use some, this time we're gonna use some Worcestershire, whatever, Worcestershire, 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 I don't know, some Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> so we're gonna put a bit on. We don't need a lot, we just need enough for the seasoning to stick to. Rub it, rub it on, slap it, and flip it. All right, once you got a nice layer on there, we're gonna hit it with some garlic salt. You can season them quite generously because when you cut it up, you're only getting tiny pieces of the seasoned part anyways. So you can go overboard, but it's kind of hard to. We're gonna hit it with some freshly cracked black pepper. And then we're gonna go with some salt-free seasonings. If you look at it, it has quite a variance in texture among the pieces. It's a bit thicker and more coarse than the seasonings we have on the steak. And cooking it with this will give us a nice crust and a bit of a textural difference when we bite into it because the salt and the pepper are quite fine. So let's get that on the steak. And now we flip and we do the other side. Then you also want to get the sides of your steak covered in seasoning if you can. You know, just try and mop up any extra seasoning you got left on your cutting board. Is this a crucial step? No. But more flavor is more flavor. And once that is nicely seasoned, we're going to put it aside and let it rest until we're ready to grill. Let's move on to our gorgeous lobster tails. So there are many ways to cook a lobster tail. You can put it in a steamer, you can boil it. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut along the shell, take out the lobster meat and lay it on top of the tail to get that beautiful presentation. We could just take out the meat and just cook it like that, but let's try and go fancy here. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your tail and you're going to get some nice kitchen shears. You're going to go right under here. Make sure you don't nick any meat. Not that it really matters, but we're, you're going to cut down right until you almost hit the base of the tail. Then we're going to scoop out the meat and lay it nice and flat across. And you're going to want to open this, but you don't want to crack it open so the shell falls apart. Just enough so you're able to get your fingers in and you're able to get the meat out. You're going to work your fingers along the shell. Most of the meat has been separated from the shell. You're going to take it, you're going to lift it up, close your shell, and boom. And your lobster tail is ready for the grill. Let's see if I can do that quicker on the second one. And it looks like we're ready to take this party outside. All right, we're out here once again with the Cuisinart 360 griddle, and we're gonna be cooking both our steak and the lobster tails on the grill itself. Let's get this opened up. And let's get cooking. Our heat is set to about medium high, so let's get the steak on there first. Some oil. And here we go. It's gonna be about two, three minutes per side. And if we need to constantly flip, we'll constantly flip. All right, it's been about three minutes. Let's give our steak a flip. So now that we flipped, let's hit it with some of our pesto butter. We're going to let that go for another 2-3 minutes. All 
All right, our internal temperature has hit about 117. So we're gonna pull the steak off and let it rest and that internal temperature will keep on climbing as the cook. Now the moment I've definitely been waiting for, let's get these lobster tails on. We're gonna let these sit on the griddle for a bit. While these are going, you're gonna wanna hit them with some of your butter. And that's gonna help some steam start rising. Ooh, and the smell is just woo, gorgeous. After about a minute or two, we're gonna hit it with some water. And cover our grill. And let those suckers steam. After about a minute and a half, two minutes, you're gonna hit them with a little bit more butter. Look at that shell color, look at that, gorgeous. And these suckers should be ready to go inside. All right, we've let our steak rest for a bit. It is now the moment of truth. Check it out. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, that's perfect. Ooh, look at that. Nice and pink and reddish and just perfect. Let's cut this up. <laughs> and let's get all the components on a plate. seen the gorgeousness now it's time for me to try the gorgeousness some steak look at that beautiful color beautiful color beautiful flavor just so tender you like you take a bite and it melts just like the butter let's go for a little bit of the lobster I think we can take it off the shell now Super light, super fluffy. A load of great flavor from the pesto butter. Now, because I can, a bite of each together. Some pasta, some lobster, and a piece of steak. Surf and turf and pasta. <laughs> I haven't said it in quite a while. But I cook some good shit. Like, woo! If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna release a revamp website that's gonna include the food section where I'll have written recipes. We're gonna take down the GF Echeleporra site and migrate it over to a overall echeleporras.com and, you know, hopefully revamp the gaming. and. All that stuff is all in here. I just need to get it all up on the computer. Speaking of which, I need a new computer if anyone wants to donate. The links are down in the description. Zelle, PayPal, Venmo, whatever. Anyways, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, stay safe out there, stay sane, and be awesome. Oof. Look at that. Hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echele Porros Productions and today we're going to show you guys how to make pulled pork in a pressure cooker. Alright, so obviously with pulled pork there's not much to it. Here we got a nice 8 pound pork butt. Just so you know, the pork butt isn't actually the butt of the pig, it's actually the shoulder. As you can see, it's a huge piece of meat. I'm not going to use all of this to make the pulled pork. I'm just going to use about half, so about 4 pounds. First off, we're going to split it in half. You can see here, this is a bone-in roast. So we're going to take the half with the bone, and we're going to try and cut along the bone to get it out, but if some of it stays in there, it doesn't really matter. Let's go down the middle. Look at that. Two 
beautiful hunks of meat. As you can see, this piece of meat is just beautifully marbled. There's nice intramuscular fat. There's a fat cap up here, which we can trim down if we wanted to, but it's gonna get integrated into the pulled pork and just create so much flavor. The butt roast is a pretty cheap piece of meat. We got an eight pound roast for about 15 bucks, and that's Orange County, Irvine prices. So where you are, it might be even cheaper. Again, just all that fat that's just gonna render down and make this pulled pork so juicy, so flavorful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to cut this bone out of here. We're gonna use one of our smaller knives so we can get in the nooks and crannies. And this beautiful piece right here, we're going to save for another day for another recipe that I already got in mind. All right, let's get to it. All right, now that you got your meat separated from your bone, I mean, I tried my best. If anyone has more experience taking the bone out of a pork butt, I'll take any pointers you can give. If we were smoking this, we could have left the bone in, and once it was ready, it would just come out cleanly. But since we're doing this in the pressure cooker, we need to get our meat into smaller cubes so it cooks evenly and it cooks all the way through. Now, we're also going to be throwing this at the top just so any lingering meat will cook and we can pull it off after. We got our meat, just get it into cubes, big or small, just make sure they're all of roughly the same size. So we're going to go for about one by one cubes or little flats in this case. Now that these are all cut up in a relatively... Blah, blah, blah. Now that these are all caught up... Oh. <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me focus. Hold on. Now that these are cut up into a relatively even size, we can go ahead and get them seasoned and ready to saute in the pressure cooker. So, like with all our meats, we're gonna go for a binder first. Today we're gonna be using some more Worcestershire sauce. And you don't wanna put too much. You don't wanna glob these, you don't wanna marinate them in this sauce. You just wanna get a nice thin layer that your seasoning will adhere to. So, let's get a bit. Rub that in. One hand dry, one hand for the meat. Today we're gonna be hitting our butt cubes with some Memphis style barbecue seasoning, which just has salt, cayenne pepper, some garlic, chili powder, black pepper, onions, celery, and some paprika. And as you can see, this is a lot of meat and not all of the seasoning is gonna stay on because we are gonna pressure cook it so with the liquid that's in there, a lot of the time it's going to be braising. So you can season this pretty generously. That was a huge chunk of meat. This is about four pounds. So, go season. Nice and coated. Then we're going to hit it with some chili pepper flakes, because we always go for some heat. And some of our salt-free seasoning, just to impart some more flavor into the meat. Pat that in. Let that set up for a bit. Now we're gonna do the other side. So flip all these dudes. You can see some raw butt. And once you're on the other side, some more. Your barbecue, your red pepper, and your salt free seasoning. Now we're gonna put these to the side, let them tack up, let the salt penetrate the meat just a bit, and we're gonna get our pressure cooker ready to saute them. Here we have our lovely pressure cooker. What we're gonna actually do before we start pressure cooking our little butt pieces is we're gonna hit the saute option here and we're gonna let the pot heat up and we're gonna go in and we're gonna sear our butt pieces. What this is gonna do is give our butt pieces a nice sear on the outside to give it a better flavor and the little brown pieces that get left behind, we're gonna use that fond to impart even more flavor into this. You're just leaving behind flavor if you leave it there. So we're gonna sear these, and then we're gonna get our liquid together, which is gonna go into the pressure cooker. A pressure cooker needs some type of liquid inside of it to build that pressure. If that pressure never builds, it's never gonna lock, and your timer is never gonna start counting down. Let's let this heat up for a bit, and then we're gonna start sealing. So as I mentioned before, a pressure cooker needs some kind of liquid in it so it can build the pressure necessary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two cups of hot water and we're gonna add two teaspoons of 
powdered caldo de pollo because each teaspoon equals one cup prepared. From there, we're gonna hit it with a teaspoon of garlic. You could add more, you could add less, depending on your garlic needs. A teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Another teaspoon of our Memphis-style barbecue rub. And a teaspoon of our salt-free seasoning. If you're ever trying to figure out what measurements we use, when in doubt, always go with a teaspoon and adjust from there. Lastly, we're gonna go with a bit of barbecue sauce, probably about two squirts. You're then gonna mix this, and that's ready for when we start pressure cooking. Did you break my chopstick? No. So, we've let our pressure cooker come up to its saute heat setting. So now we're gonna get these pieces, we're gonna toss them in, we're gonna get some nice browning. As you can see, I already tested a piece down here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get some oil in. And let's get these butt cubes into our pressure cooker. All right, now that we got our pieces seared, we're gonna take our liquid concoction we made earlier. I'm gonna pour that in. Now that we got our liquid inside, we're gonna hit pressure cook. We're gonna take our pressure cooker up to 90 minutes or an hour and a half, and you're gonna let that start, which it'll be in a couple seconds. There you go, it's on. And from there, we can add our pieces back, and we're gonna let this come up to pressure. You're gonna get all your pieces in, We're gonna add just a little bit more water, just so things are nice and covered. And now, making a return from earlier, our bone, which we're just gonna put right here at the top. Last but not least, we're gonna get our lid on. And when you hear that little jingle, that means it's closed. And once the pressure is built completely, and it's at high pressure, our timer's gonna start counting down. All right, once it's come up to pressure, our timer will start. And now all we do is wait. All right, so it's been an hour and a half and this thing smells awesome. And now it's ready to depressurize. Up here, there's a little dial that says ceiling or venting. We're gonna push it to venting and all the steam and all the pressure is gonna release. So this is probably gonna take a minute or two. <laughs> minute or two. <laughs> all right, once your pot is done venting, it's time to open. So when this thing is pressurized, it's gonna lock. So you won't be able to open it. But right now, since it's done, Let's open it up and let's look inside. And like I said earlier, there's our bone, all nice and clean. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the meat from the pot, we're gonna put it in here, and we're gonna use some forks to shred it. All right, as you can see here, this is just some of our meat, this isn't all of it, but it's so tender that if I just squish it down with this spoon, it already starts coming apart. And that's when you know that it's just ready. And once you got all your meat out of the pot, you can put that aside and let's get to shredding this. And there it is in all its shredded glory. As you can see, definitely a big difference between a pressure cooker pulled pork and a smoked pulled pork. One day we'll get there. One day when I get a smoker or we're over in Tennessee and Kyle wants to shoot a video with us, or if Fern wants to go ahead and shoot a video with us and let us borrow his smoker, I mean, by all means, this pulled pork can be a base for a lot of dishes, but definitely how can you make pulled pork and not make a barbecue pulled pork sandwich? So that's where we're going next. Boom. 
two buns. So, for our pulled pork sandwich, we're gonna start off with some pickles, a nice dollop of pulled pork. And how do you have a barbecue pulled pork sandwich if you don't got some barbecue? Put the top of the sandwich on, and you got barbecue pulled pork sandwiches. All right, let's do this. Oof, look at that. Let's give this a taste. All right, cheers. That hits the spot. After waiting an hour and a half, oh. <coughs> After waiting an hour and a half, almost two hours for this, it really hits the spot. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so you can see future uploads from us. We're back. Hopefully we'll be more consistent. Busy time, crazy world. Be safe, be awesome. Peace. Hey everybody, this is Julio of Echele Porros Productions and today we're gonna be showing you how to make some simple mashed taters. So, mashed potatoes are definitely not a complex dish. All you're gonna need to make some awesome mashed potatoes are some potatoes. Here we chose some medium russet potatoes, some butter, and some salt. To go a little extra, you can use some heavy cream to add to the overall creaminess of the end product. But for basics, you're just gonna need potatoes, butter, and salt, and that's it. All right, so to get things started, we're gonna cut these into thirds, cut those in half. And from there, you could go ahead and throw them in your pot and get them boiling. But as I said, the smaller you cut them, the faster they cook. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these again in half. And chunks like that should be good to go. So again, we're gonna go thirds, half, and half. Cut them in quarter fourths, if that makes sense. Or third quarters. Some shit like that. All right, now that you got your potatoes cut up, we're going to get them over to the stovetop and get the water ready for them to get boiling. We got our pot filled with some water already. What you're gonna do before you get the potatoes in there is you're gonna take your salt and you're just gonna salt this bitch up. What you wanna do is get this water to basically resemble seawater. You want it to get that very salty taste because as the potatoes are boiling in it, they're gonna start absorbing that salt. And then once you get the potatoes out and mashed, you're not gonna need to add extra salt at the end. Once these are done, they should have the perfect quote unquote amount of seasoning. So you're gonna get your salt and you're just gonna get it in there. Give it a nice stir. You didn't break that chocolate. All right, once you got your water salted, we're gonna get our potatoes. You're gonna wanna make sure your potatoes are topped off, so we're gonna actually put a little more water in here. So once you got all of that, you're gonna put your lid on, put your flame on high or medium or whatever you want to get your potatoes cooked. I put it on high because that's a lot of potatoes and we need that cooking as quick as possible. So you're gonna let it come to a boil and you're gonna let it simmer until those potatoes are nice and tender. Until you can get one and stick a knife or a fork through it super easily, just like butter. So let's just let that sit and now we wait. All right, so it's been about 30, 40 minutes. These potatoes have been boiling. Let's check them out. So first things first, what I did after I put these things to boil is I put a couple bay leaves in there just because that's gonna help enhance the flavor. Bay leaf makes things taste awesome and smell even better. Cause we taste not only with our mouths, but we also taste with our eyes and our nose. So to check that these things are nice and tender, you're gonna take a potato, just get a fork. And if it goes in like butter and breaks apart, nice and tender we're ready to get these off the heat now that you got your potatoes out of the water and into your bowl we're gonna go ahead and just mash them down so just get your masher your ricer whatever you got and just have at it all right all right <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> punk. <laughs> All right, now that you've gone and mashed all those big pieces into nice smaller pieces, it doesn't look like a typical mashed potato yet, but don't worry, we're still getting there. Now it's time to add all that butter in. Here we got about two sticks of butter. We're gonna see how that looks after we incorporate them in. Uh, we might add more, and we still got our heavy cream on the side if we need its assistance. We'll just put some butter in. We're gonna take our spoon, thingy and we're just gonna mix it around the residual heat should melt those butter pieces down and it's gonna give us a nice silky smooth mashed tater and just for reference you can skin your potatoes before this but trying to skin a whole bunch of potatoes takes forever so we do have a buttload of potatoes here so what we're gonna do is we are gonna use our heavy cream so just pour that in there This is probably about a cup, half a cup. I used a lot for a clam chowder the other day, which if you haven't seen us make clam chowder, link is up above. So you're gonna put that in. Oh, and get that nice squishy sound. This is coming together to look like mashed taters. Look at that, mashed tater consistency. We're probably just gonna get a bit more butter into this and then we should be done. Now that you got your heavy cream and your butter all incorporated into there, now it's taking mashed potato form. So last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some pepper and we should be good to go. And since this is a buttload of mashed potatoes, you're gonna wanna add a good amount of pepper. So do this. We got our mashed taters, which looks like ice cream, but if you didn't know, if you're watching an ice cream commercial, they're actually using mashed potatoes for, in the place of vanilla ice cream. So that's why it looks so perfect. But anyways, let's give it a try. That, damn some good taters. <laughs> it's nice, it has creamy, and... <laughs> Creamy. <laughs> it's nice, it has a creamy texture, perfect side dish to, to some barbecue, to steak, put a biscuit on the side, get some chicken tenders, whatever suits your fancy. Super simple recipe, super simple instructions, just gonna take a little arm muscle to cut those potatoes and to mash them, but really in, let's say an hour and a half, because those potatoes can take forever to boil sometimes, you have some awesome mashed potatoes. So anyways, if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Hope you had a good 4th of July and happy birthday to me next week. So hit that subscribe button. For his Pe birthday. Peace. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Fulio of Echele Porras Productions and today we're going to be making some awesome tacos al pastor. Let's get to this gorgeous hunk of meat that isn't me. Making its triumphant return, here is the other half of our pork butt. The first half with the bone in we use for our pressure cooker pulled pork, which you can check out if you haven't already. Link in the link, link, link will pop up. Anyways, this is the other half of our pork butt, which was about eight pounds total. So this is about a four pound, you know, unalga, one cheek. So it's been almost completely thawed. What we're gonna do, we're gonna cut it probably into one inch to half inch slices. So let's do that. And you want this not completely thawed because it's much easier to cut partially frozen meat than it is to cut a completely thawed piece of meat because it's going to be all wangle. And use a decently sharp knife. Look at that gorgeousness. And there you have it. Gorgeous slices of pork ass. Friendly reminder, pork butt is not the actual butt, it's the shoulder. So, we have our container here that we're just gonna get our pork slices and plop them in. 
So now that we have our pork nalga in slices, we are gonna make the al pastor marinade. Let's start off with our chiles. We are gonna be using some dried ancho and guajillo peppers. We're gonna cut off the top, we're gonna de-seed them, we're gonna toast them up in a pan for a bit, and then we're gonna boil them until they're rehydrated. We have our trusty chipotle peppers and adobo, some achiote paste to add more flavor and to give it that really nice red color that you associate with al pastor tacos or al pastor meats in general. An onion, some garlic, our trusty garlic salt, pepper, our salt-free seasoning, paprika, cumin, thyme, oregano, pineapple juice, juice and zest of a lime, juice of an orange, and some apple cider vinegar. Let's get that started. Let's get these chiles de-seeded. We're gonna cut off the top, and you're just gonna tap it, open it up a bit. And there your seeds are. We are over at our stove top. We have our chiles in a dry pan over medium lowish heat, and we're just gonna let them toast for a bit. The guajillos are not a spicy chile in general. They're more for flavor. The ancho is, depending on your spice preference, you know, if you got white people spicy, Mexican spicy, and like super crazy Asian spicy, adjust flavors to your liking. So you can see, these are starting to puff up a bit after they toasted. You're gonna toast them until your peppers get a bit pliable, which you can see this one's getting a bit pliable now. After they've toasted for a bit, you're gonna go ahead and hit them with some water. Enough to cover them and enough to submerge them because as they boil, they're gonna rehydrate. All right, so we have all the stuff ready to put in our marinade. We're gonna blend it all up, pour it over the nalga slices that we have from the pork butt, and we're gonna let this sit for about four-ish hours. If you can do overnight, that's good. Try to get that sweet spot three to four overnight. So, what we're gonna get started with, some onions, our chiles, our chipotle and adobo. Adobo. Gosh, it's gonna be so spicy our achiote paste, two, three and a half ounce box. You can see it has a really nice scarlet red color that's just gonna make our al pastor look gorgeous. Our spices, we have a tablespoon of garlic, a tablespoon of cumin, paprika, oregano, thyme, pepper, and salt. So you're gonna put all that in. Next, you're gonna put your juices. This is a cup of pineapple juice, juice of one large orange, juice of one lime, and also the zest off that lime. So we're gonna pour that all in. Put your lid on, cause you don't want this shit going everywhere. We're gonna give it a couple quick pulses so the things start to incorporate and then we're just gonna let it ride for a bit. We are done. Whoo, and that smells gorgeous. Whoo, that clears the sinuses. So now, it is the time to put our marinade on our nalga slices. On our <laughs> pork butt slices. On our pork butt slices. So, we're just gonna get this, and you're just gonna pour it in. Once you have a good amount in there, you're gonna wanna go in, get your hands dirty a bit, and just make sure all the pieces are covered. So we're gonna go in, flip these bitches, make sure they're nice and covered. Once you have all your meat nice and covered in your marinade, cover it with some plastic wrap and throw it in the fridge. We're gonna let it sit for about four hours, so for you it'll be instantaneous, but we'll see you back in four hours. It's almost time for our meat to come out of the fridge. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our avocado lime crema that's gonna go on our tacos. Really simple to make, you just put it all in a blender. As you can see here, I already have one bushel of cilantro already roughly chopped in here. We're gonna put some onion, 
a de-seeded jalapeno, a quartered tomatillo, two large avocados. And we're also going to be adding some sour cream and a bit of mayo, two tablespoons of lime juice. I'm gonna put the lid on and you're gonna blend that together. We're also going to be adding a tablespoon of salt and our trusty black pepper. You're gonna give it a little taste and that's good to go. Let's get our meat out of the fridge. And there is our meat. This looks gorgeous. Woo! So we're gonna be taking this outside to the 360 griddle. So before we get out to the griddle, we're gonna take our nalga slices and we're going to cube them up so they cook just like a taquero. There's all our cubes. Let's get this outside. All right, we're back out here with the Cuisinart 360 griddle. This thing's been on, it's been preheating, it's roaring hot. We are ready to grill some meat. Let's do this. Woo! That is a gorgeous sound. That is a gorgeous smell. I'm so ready for this. Right, as you have to have with all good tacos, we're gonna get our tortillas, get some of the oil from the meat, and get it on there. Any good Mexican knows you need to flip the tortillas by hand, unless you a little bitch. All right, let's get this taco made. Of course, you need your tortilla. Gonna get a bit of meat. Gonna do some grilled onions that we cooked off while the meat was marinating. Some cilantro. Some of our avocado lime crema. Look at all that deliciousness. So gorgeous, we're gonna make two more. Finish these off with a little bit of lime. Let's dig in. You are gorgeous. Who needs a taco truck? Echale por us tacos right here, in house, Santana. Now you could drink a beer with this and it'd be a perfect accompaniment, pero si no quieres tomar agua, we got a drink for you coming up right now. <clears throat> We're gonna make a simple paloma. For a paloma, you can salt the rim, but I don't really like the extra salt. It doesn't really add anything to me. It's just a distraction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tequila, pour off a shot, which this thing is actually probably a bit more than a shot, but I won't tell if you don't. Get that in our cup. Gonna hit it with some esquer, some lime juice, and garnish with a lime wedge. The taste test. Another bite of taco. <laughs> and we'll see you for the next video. Peace.